Hey, Shoujo fans, and welcome to episode 61 of Shoujo Sunday. This week, we are beginning our coverage on Sasaki and Miyano. Let's dig in. It's Shoujo Sange time. Finally, finally, Shoujo Sange, but for real. For real, yes. <laughs> what a beautiful time to be queer. You know what? We're so queer. We're kind of jump starting um, our time a month early. But <laughs> yes, yes, it is Pride season. <laughs> pride season. Pride era, if you will. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess. Let's dig into this first episode. I do want to say up top, I am really enjoying this so far. What about you, Chica? I love it. Oh. It was so cute. We needed some light and sunshine back. And so this was perfect for me. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like this came at a perfect time for me. This is like restoring me. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. With that said, let's get into our soft serve summary of episode one. First time. Here's our soft serve summary brought to us by Wikipedia. Miyano, a first year student at an all boys high school, witnesses another student being beaten up. As he's about to intercede, second year student Sasaki steps in and breaks up the fight. A few days later, Miyano visits the classroom of his fellow disciplinary committee member Hirano, who is in the same class as Sasaki. Miyano thanks Sasaki for stopping the fight, though Hirano mistakes Sasaki's interest in him for harassment and warns him not to bother Miyano. The bully Sasaki intercepted beat him up in retaliation. Afterwards, Miyano offers him a band-aid, and Sasaki half-jokingly asks him out on a date. In the coming months, the two boys become friends and begin commuting to school together. Sasaki asks for manga recommendations, and Miyano reveals his love for the yaoi genre, leading him to routinely lend him copies of his favorite manga, which they privately discuss at school. Sasaki develops a crush on Miyano. And that is our soft serve summary of episode one. Chika, do you have a theme idea for this episode? Yes, I said, if you constantly think about a person fondly, then you like them. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. I love that so much. Thank you. What's yours? So I did struggle with themes this week. I will say that. I think I was in my shoujo feels. But for this episode, I do have a theme. And I wrote, the heart wants what the heart wants, whether that's being drawn to boys' love stories or who you develop a crush on. Aww. That's cute. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any sprinkles on top? Yes. Um, guys, the opening and ending. Yes. So the opening song is called Mabataki by Miracle Chimpanzee. That's a fantastic name. It's very interesting. Like, I wonder if their logo is reminiscent of like those Bitcoin NFT monkeys. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> wow. That's what that already thinking. feels like a relic of the internet. <laughs> right, right. Because it's like NFTs became illegal or whoever was doing them got arrested. But either way, like I was thinking that when I heard the name. But their song is the opening and it's very much so Suzaki's point of view. You could just tell it's Suzaki by how the lyrics are and it sounds so cute and earnest like him. So I recommend it to you guys. And also the ending song is called Ichigo Sunset by Yusuke Shirai. And this point of view to me is coming from them as a couple versus coming Ooh. from Miyano. And it kind of just hints at, or not even hints at, it just talks about first love and just little anecdotes from the show about them liking chocolate that's not that sweet and wanting to go walk home together and like stuff like that. So those were two of my sprinkles and I have one last sprinkle. 
Okay, I don't have a serious sprinkle. I didn't even flesh out the joke I had. I know I'm always giving joking sprinkles, guys. I hope you're not like mad at me for that. But (laughs) I just, (laughs) there was just something, there's got to be something there about that extra sweet peach, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. There's just, there's got to be something there. Uh, It's up for interpretation. I'm going to leave it at that. What's your last (laughs) sprinkle? (laughs) (laughs) um my last sprinkle is the shoujo bubbles of love oh my i what a beautiful artistic choice that's like also like floats your boat yeah fantastic it kind of reminded me of heartstopper um which is not anime but if you're into boys love i believe it's on netflix i can't recommend heartstopper to you enough it is a beautiful story that will just give you like, it's a beautiful queer story. That, like, it will give you all, everything you need and more. But sorry, go on, Chica. <laughs> no, no, oh, it's fine. I just, I loved the shoujo bubbles of love. Because they even mention it in the soft, in the soft serve summary, you know, that yaoi by itself is a genre, sort of, or I feel like, yeah, sort of, it's a genre, demo, probably demo, but it's its own thing. Mm-hmm. And... So I love that in particular, I think what makes me really happy that we're covering this is that we get to talk about boys love, but we're also talking about it from a shoujo perspective because it is a shoujo like manga. Mm -hmm. And I just like that we get to do this because like we're starting off or at least our first legitimately like queer series is this one. And it's such a wholesome anime Because if we skewed to do like banana fish, that would have been really hard. So, which is also shoujo, which is also sort of boys love. But this is like, we get to have all of the softness of it, the character development, how they grow together. And I'm saying all of this while this is the first time I've ever seen this. So Yeah, it's just, it's giving that off the bat and it's really just wonderful so far yeah yeah and i just i liked at least wrapping all of this up the fact that they have the shoujo bubbles to show that this is shoujo chef's kiss Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with that shall we get into floats your boat yeah i'll kick it off because i have a really general one up front i just put sasaki is so pure miyano is precious i'm so excited to see where this goes yes They're just, oh, I was so happy watching this. (laughs) Me too. It's just, I don't know. I just felt like I really needed this right now. Every Mm -hmm. vibe of the show, it's really doing all the right things for me. I'm really, really enjoying it so far. What is one of your first floats your boats? Mine, very start. It's Miyano calling Suzaki to come help the student getting beaten up. Because I was just like, what? You're in the middle of this drama and it's it's beautiful because he's just like, no, like, don't intercede. I'm going to do it. I'll help out this person, which we do find out who the person is. Yeah, that was an interesting twist. I actually um, interpreted the phone call differently. I thought he was talking to Hirano on the phone oh. and Sasaki happened to be passing by cleaning oh. and that's how they met. That's, that's what I thought happened. You know what? You're probably right. Knowing Miano, you're probably right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he, I mean, the timeline was a little confusing. I'll talk about that in Banana Split. Yeah. But I I thought that that was them meeting for the first time. Oh. Like a meet cute. (laughs) Right, right. You know what? Wait till we get to Banana Split on the timing thing. Because like, yeah, Yeah, I don't think it, yeah, yeah. Um, But I thought it was nice that he went to go help that kid. Absolutely. Yeah, like without even a second thought, he's just like, oh, I'm here. I'm capable of doing something about this situation. So let me do it. Mm -hmm. I love to see that. Me too. So the next thing that I have is I just thought that the way that they bonded over the boys love manga was so cute. Miano seems like he's just finally able to gush about something he's kind of held close to his chest, you know, with someone who actually wants to listen. And meanwhile, Sasaki is just like... He's cute. He can't, like, help but think that when he watches him rant about something he's passionate about, Mm. which, oh, get somebody who thinks of you like that when you're ranting about something you like. And instead of you thinking, like, oh, my God, I'm talking too much, they're thinking you're cute. Right? Oh, my God. 
goals. When I am in love or if I have feelings and stuff, I love hearing about whoever that person is, like what they really love or what they're interested in. Yeah. Because I want to get to the root of like how passionate you are. Like it reminds me of this one YouTuber. He used to go by Ideas of Ice and Fire, but I think he's just Quinn's Ideas on YouTube. And when he got married to his husband, like before they even got married, he found this intricate Dune box because Quinn is like so in love with Dune. And this is way before like, I don't know if the first movie was out yet or it was in and around that time. And like created this, like he couldn't just open the box. Like he had to figure out like the code and it was based off of the book lore. Oh, wow. And I was flipping out because I was just like, wow, like that is so beautiful and loving. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm totally there. Like, Suzaki just being able to appreciate that. I feel like for, for me, like, on, on a friend level, even we've experienced this because of going over um, Hana, Yor- Hana Yoridango on Patreon. Because mm-hmm. I never had anybody to talk about the oh. Japanese live action with. Yeah. So it's just re- literally just been me for like 20 years. And so then I'm like, oh, we get to do this together. So now like, um, it's very exciting, guys. You should join our Patreon. You but, should. You should. <laughs> um, but so it's so much fun. So it's like, I can only imagine what that's like. Or it's been a while for me. What it's like to see that, but like in a romantic level like yeah oh, this is what makes this person tick yeah that it's such a beautiful thing mm-hmm. what's the next thing you have yeah so because i think i also had miano being happy about Suzaki understanding the appeal of yaoi in boys love mm-hmm. so the next thing that i had is that he made him cookies i have that next too it was so precious yes oh my gosh that's so you <laughs> it, it really it's giving me it really is i see a lot of myself in sasaki and yeah. it's wonderful he's a baker yes oh my gosh like i just oh my gosh this just made me so happy i'm gonna get it together guys i promise <laughs> but yeah just giving him cookies that's so sweet right and he just constantly thinks that miano is cute like that is a litany this entire like all of the episodes that we watch it is and you know what it reminds me of this is a very personal thing for me to share Mm -hmm. but i'm going to anyway because i think it's funny so you guys obviously know about soleil or if this is your first series that you're tuning into i have a little tabby cat her name is soleil and she's precious and about 20,000 times a day, Every basically every time I make eye contact with this cat, I go, I love you. And I'm just like, I want to find somebody that I want to say I love you to as much as I say it to my cat. Right? Oh my <laughs> and God. And that's like Sasaki thinking every time he looks at Miyano, you're cute. And that that's that's how I like related to it. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, that's his like soleil moment. <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's so cute. Yeah. The next thing that I have is the fact that Miyano wants to curate his manga recommendation to Sasaki, so he records what he likes and dislikes in a little notepad. Yeah, honestly, that's the best thing, too. Like, I've had people and I've seen people just be like, what manga should I read? And it's like, what genres do you like? Right. What kind of story do you enjoy? Right. Because it's like, based off of that, I could tell you, oh, these are the stories you would like the most based off of what you say, what genres you like. Yeah. Sorry about the alarm. My bad. Oh, that's okay. So him just taking like the notes, it's like, he's such a caring person. Yeah. It's so considerate. Yeah, because he just was like, oh, well, if he likes what I like, then I can at least let him know, like, these are the type of series you want to go for and stuff. So it's just altogether really sweet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What have you got next? I have um, just a couple more. Floats your boat. Miyano defends Suzaki's character after people call him a delinquent. Oh, yeah. That was really nice. Yeah. I hate when people just bully somebody else it's like you don't know all of the facts like just because he is a temporary ginger see even the different episode but even if his his hair is dyed (laughs) that doesn't necessarily mean or his ears are pierced that doesn't mean he's a delinquent he just has different style than y'all 
Right. Yeah. People just assume things. They're cool with Hirano. Hirano, which I know another episode, we find out that he also dyes his hair. Right. What's the difference between blonde and red? Like, what makes one more, like, okay than the other? Right, that's what I'm saying. So it's just kind of like, if you don't judge him, you shouldn't judge Sasaki either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next let's your vote that I have is we get the no umbrella and it's raining trope. Yes. Oh, I love this trope. Oh. So Sasaki and Miyano are sharing Miyano's umbrella as they walk to the train to go home together. I, I just thought that was cute. The forced closeness of it all. Yes. Oh, it just made me so, oh my gosh. I know. Oh. Just in, <laughs> just inject this into my veins. Yes, truly. Oh. I mean, not that I didn't know I was queer. I've known I was queer since I saw Haruka on Sailor Moon. But <laughs> I will be queer again. Like, this is such a good show. <laughs> Discovering queerness all over again. All over. Yeah. Like, they're even saying different terms. So first off, like, they say Fudanshi, which is just boy that's into like boys love Mm -hmm. i think i've seen the girl version more which is fujoshi which is like the same thing girl into boys love and stuff and then um Mm -hmm. there's other terms we'll get into it later but like (laughs) it's just amazing i just love how open it is and we haven't dealt with anything truly negative yet which is so nice yeah it really is it's very refreshing Mm -hmm. I said, I think it's cute to see how the more Suzaki's feelings grow, the more you see his thoughts revolve around Miyano. Yeah, yeah. They happen before he can stop them. Yeah, so I just thought it was very, very cute. Mm -hmm. The next thing that I have is the indirect kiss with the extra sweet peach drink, which I love peach. Like, I would really like to try it. It looked really refreshing. But it also might be too sweet for me. But uh, it sounded good. <laughs> Tasting peach. But um, bum. Oh god! I know. I'm sorry. I ruined it, guys. <laughs> sorry, y'all. There's got to be something. That, I mean, they're just uh, they're dangling it in front of us, you know. In my face. Right. The indirect kiss and it's a peach drink. Like, come I'm, on. Come on. <laughs> I wish you could see me looking into the non like a non-existent camera. Like, come on, y'all. Come on, please. <laughs> oh man. I think the last one that I have is at the end, actually. Okay, I do have one more. It's still kind of related to the peach drink. Okay. When Sasaki eats the bitter candy with like the alcohol in it, and he doesn't like it, Miyano buys him one of those peach drinks to like wash the taste down. I thought that was really thoughtful for him to remember such a small detail, you know. Yeah. Remembering a small detail like that, I, I feel like you know that person has to stand out to you in some way. Right, and something that I especially love about this and this episode is that he didn't get drunk. You know, they love to randomly just do that. Like, oh, he has the lowest alcohol tolerance. Now he's drunk. Right. That a chocolate. In a chocolate. (laughs) But no, that didn't happen. So I was very happy. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. What's your last post you wrote? Mine is just Suzaki deciding that he likes Miyano. Oh, yeah. That is a really big step as someone who's like discovering their queerness Mm -hmm. when within yourself you're just like no like what i am feeling is romantic or like a deeper feeling in some way Mm -hmm. towards this person it's not actually platonic like i believed it should be off the bat so yeah that that is a a huge step for him yeah being able to admit your queerness to yourself is the first step really definitely yeah are we ready to move into banana split Sure. Okay. I only have one and it was about, I felt like the timeline was a little confusing of this episode because it seems to kind of like lull between the past and the present. So I kind of got confused like where we were in the timeline at times. Yeah. Were you feeling that too? Or was it just me? No, it reminds me of like when you're watching TikTok videos, if it still exists by the point that this is published. No. (laughs) Um, if you, it reminds me of when you watch TikTok videos and then they 
add the video in such a way that you're technically starting off at the end of the clip and then it sort of restarts at the front and so that's how they did this episode so at first That's why I thought, oh, he called Sasaki. And then I got confused because I was just like, wait, what's going on? And I mean, I'm able to understand now after we're seeing other episodes and stuff. But I totally feel what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a little confusing. What do you have for Banana Split? Because I'm I'm all done already. Why not call the faculty to do their job instead of having a teacher, (laughs) not having a student (laughs) go and break up this fight? Classic Shoujo Sunday. Where's the faculty? Where's the faculty? Even though we love this show so far, where's yeah. the faculty? Where's the faculty? They got hit with a where's the faculty? Mm-hmm. The next one is, I didn't put in Float Your Boat, and it's definitely not Ice Cream Me, Cream. It's just, I said it was interesting to see Sasaki battling his feelings and asking himself if he is sure that he likes Miano and that Miano is a guy. Seeing him do that and he's not shaming himself at all Mm -hmm. he's just questioning if this is like true or not i did like that and stuff so but yeah i just thought it was interesting to see it in this particular way yeah yeah because i mean with a heteronormativity just being the thing you know i can understand of course him trying to like repel the thought if that's like not how he identifies he's like no that's that's not how I am. I don't like boys. So I do really appreciate him not shaming himself and just being like, but do I like this boy? Um, Which, honey, that's how it starts. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think the last one I have is because Sasaki gets kind of beaten up by those people that beat up Kurosawa before. But it happens again. So it's like he broke up the fight and I guess they came back for a second helping at a later date, which why? Right. So he gets messed up and he's like, oh, maybe I should go home. And Miano starts talking to him and he's all bright. And I was just like, weren't you too hurt to stay? (laughs) Well, they say adrenaline, when adrenaline takes over, you almost like don't feel pain. Mm. So maybe he got some kind of rush by talking to him. Oh, I know. That's oh, so cute. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all I have for banana split. Okay, I don't have anything until ice cream. You scream. Do you have any rocky road? No, I have nuts. Oh, okay. What's our nuts? Okay, so nuts is how do you lend someone yaoi like that out of the blue? Okay, that is that's true. And it sounded like at least what I gathered, Sasaki was just asking for manga, like any manga. <laughs> And Miana just like, yep, take my yaoi. <laughs> right. Without asking if like you'd be into that. <laughs> right. Like that's that's why I said it was nuts. Yeah. Because yaoi, when I like boys love stuff, I've got to know you like it before I start talking about what I like, which I could say what I do like. It just ended. And it's not even... um it's a boy's love, but it's from Korea and stuff. It's called Full Volume. Oh my gosh, like the men are like super muscled, but then they have like chests. <laughs> but not like a woman. Mm-hmm. It's like man titty, but muscular man titty. But is there milk in this man titty? Like you just... You just don't a, know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Question. But it's so like the scenes, the spicy scenes... 10 out of 10. But regardless, I would have to know you know you to be like, oh, yeah, here, I'm going to lend you a physical volume of my yaoi. Like, no. Yeah. 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 Which, I mean, I don't know if they did that as like a nod because yaoi, I think, came from shoujo manga. Like, girls love boys love. I think it was derived out of shoujo manga. If I'm wrong, watch your mouth. <laughs> no like um no if i'm wrong you could tell me i'm wrong just be nice about it but like yeah i think it came from that so if that's the situation of why they played it like that then okay that's a really tiny but nice nod to the history Mm -hmm. but still i do think it's nuts that he was just like boys love because to me i'm just like okay what level of yaoi is this like were they fucking in it 
because if they're doing the deed that there's no way i would give that out no oh my god no (laughs) yeah there's just no way i'm giving that out because it's like i need to know you but either way yeah yeah that's all i had for nuts okay so ice cream ice cream i just have one and it's that miono eats wasabi flavored candy personally that is not for me so that is why it is ice cream ice cream right that's just like wow his cuteness does not go to his taste buds as well like it just is the outside but um yeah i think the one that i had is basically because hirano was questioning why Sasaki was coming around so much and it seemed like he didn't really like what was going on and so I said that he should give Sasaki more benefit of the doubt because they're in the same class together. (laughs) Yeah I think so too. Yeah Um, but that's all I had for Ice Cream You Scream. Okay well let us move on into episode two Someone I Like. Here is our soft serve summary brought to us by Wikipedia. Miyano is embarrassed when Sasaki wants to discuss yaoi manga at school and asks him not to talk about it in public. Privately, Sasaki struggles to combat his growing feelings for Miyano. Miyano's classmate Tashiro observes their close bond and asks if they are dating, which Miyano furiously denies. Kurosawa, the student who was being beaten up in the last episode, defends their manga arrangement despite Sasaki's delinquent persona. The interaction makes Miyano worry that Sasaki is being harassed over his hobby. On their way home from school, Sasaki notices a Valentine's Day display and suggests he and Miyano buy sweets for each other, though Miyano declines. Sasaki buys him chocolates anyway. And that is our soft serve summary. I unfortunately do not have a theme for this episode. I struggled with themes for both of these last two episodes. Do you have a theme, Chica? I feel like it's not even a concrete theme. I just said that love blooms. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was something about like stirring feelings, like beginnings, Mm -hmm. you know, that I was feeling, but I just couldn't like put it into words. Yeah, yeah, same. It's like I would try to do more like a paragraph. I mean, I guess... It counts, but still not a paragraph, a sentence, my God. (laughs) I would try to put it into a sentence. But I was just like, yeah, the love is growing. It's, you know what? It's blooming. It's, that's what it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any sprinkles? The chocolate. Okay. So the way that I see this chocolate stuff, which I was just like, where are we going? Where are we Mm -hmm. going with this game? But I like that for both of them, that chocolate has to be just right in order for them to enjoy it. So it's sweet, but it can't be too sweet. It's just perfect. It's just right in this certain way for both of them. Yeah, all that's cute. Yeah. So moving into Floats Your Boat, the first thing I have is that Miyano cannot stop blushing when Sasaki says someone I like and his friend picks up on it immediately that was Kurosawa I believe Mm -hmm. yeah that was very cute both of them are like blushing all the time Mm -hmm. it's so adorable yeah yeah I love that they go BL shopping together yes yes they're finally just like bonding over it in public (laughs) uh like book dates please Please, sign me up. Oh my god, a book date. Sign me up, too. Goals, goals, goals. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, The next thing that I have is Miyano's embarrassment (laughs) (laughs) when Sasaki overhears his drama CD and he begs him to, quote, get immediate amnesia because he's so embarrassed he doesn't want him to remember. Right, because honestly, bring back shame. Miyano... (laughs) You cannot listen to porn in the middle of a hallway. Like, are you dumb? Right. (laughs) Oh, my God. Like, I thought it was going to be just like, you know, a little silly, but it was like spicy audio. It was like they were about to get like it was clearly foreplay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, how can you calmly listen to that with people walking around you? Please. Right. No, you can't. (laughs) And in school? And then, because that's the thing, if he gets, like, um, 
a little happy about it everybody's going no <laughs> exactly like there's a time and place and it's absolutely not the hallway in school yeah yeah but i did think that it was very very funny that he was just like get amnesia don't remember this because at first he even tried to play it off like i don't know how it got connected into this yeah so i thought he had like an ipod or something and i was just like oh, okay you could play it off like i was listening to a song and it switched to this but then he said it was a cd and i was just like you're done yeah yeah, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you have? I said, I love how in the first episode, it's all about Suzaki noticing Miano. And in the second episode, it is Miano noticing Suzaki. Yes. Oh, slowly but surely. Yes. He's making more of an effort to push those feelings away than Suzaki did. Yeah. We'll get to that in another point, but... Okay, yeah, I would love to talk about that more, yeah. Yeah, but it's good that he it's at least on his radar. Yes. Not the radar that we think it should be on, but it's at least on its radar. Right, right. It's almost like the, the expectations are flipped, but again, we can talk about it later. Yeah. The next thing that I have, in all caps, is that Sasaki asks him to play the Pocky game. <gasps> oh... <gasps> My God, the boldness, the boldness of that. And then just like in that same scene, um, which was a, a little interesting, especially for school. Right. The tension, the tension. I didn't expect him to like eat it from his hand. I was like, okay, this is a little bit much actually. But just the fact that like even Sasaki couldn't handle like the tension between them. Like he didn't know what to do. <laughs> It was just executed really nicely. He has been wanting to touch him so bad. Yes. And so even though like when it comes to the Pocky game, usually you put one in in one person's mouth and the other in another person's mouth, like Lady and the Tramp with the spaghetti. Mm -hmm. And then you're supposed to like eat it till the middle, right? So that's what's actually supposed to happen. Now, I guess Miana didn't fully comprehend it. So he's just eating it from his hand. And it's just like, oh my gosh, what if his mouth touches his fingers? Like he's going to die. Yeah. I could, <laughs> I was tense. I was just like, this is a lot. Wow. Okay. I love these little maneuvers. Like uh, the pacing of this, sign me up. I love this. Oh my God. Yeah, I I was like on the edge of my seat for that scene because I'm like, where is this going to go? I feel like this is like later episodes level of tension. So, oh my gosh, I love yes! the show. I love the show simply. You know what? This is what ha we have been missing because like, okay, slow burns are fine and dandy, but they can be a little quicker like this. Like I was excited. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I should have agreed with it when you were saying this, or maybe I did, when um, Suzaki told Miyano that he likes to see what someone he likes likes. Like, it said much better than that, y'all. Like, I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> I thought that was very cute. And then um, in relation to the Pocky scene, wasn't this the Pocky scene after it? He goes to the sink and he's blushing, like, hard. Yeah, because, I mean... That was the closest he ever got to like somewhat of an I, I don't it's I don't want to say it's intimate but like it felt intimate. It felt intimate to me. Yeah, like it was an intimate moment. Mhm. Mm and that I mean, that's pretty major. Yeah. For like someone you have feelings for, especially when they're so fresh like that and it's kind of all you can think about. Wow. Just touching, I would lose my mind. <laughs> yeah. Like so bad. Yeah. The last Blitzer Bows that I have is when Sasaki reaches up to perhaps grab Miyano's hand or move the book as he's hiding his face behind it because he's describing how he first discovered boys love and he just like wants to hide his face as he's describing it. But like, <sighs> Sasaki just like just can't bring himself to do it. He was going to touch his fingertips, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh my God. The tension. Yeah. The tension. I live and die for tension in a romance story. And this is it. This is top tier. Yeah. I needed this level of tension because what? Like, I was internally screaming. Oh, yeah. Because I was just like, oh, my gosh. Because if you touch him, then y'all are going to look at each other and, like, he's <gasps> going to get it. Like, oh, my God. He's got everything's gonna make sense yeah. yeah yeah that's all i've got oh i liked that we get to fi learn in this episode that it was kurosawa that was being beaten up oh yeah and so he, he says that suzaki is a good person because he saved him 
Oh, oh yes, yeah, Suzaki. Okay, so when, when they were in the Valentine's Day chocolate store and Miyano was looking at the chocolate, Suzaki literally said exactly what was on Miyano's mind, where he's just like, oh, yeah. He was thinking about, oh, like, Valentine's Day chocolate and a BL. Like, it's literally, like, verbatim exactly what he was thinking. So adorable. Yeah, like, like this would be a perfect setup for a BL story or something. Yeah. It's so cute. It was so, so cute. Oh, so cute. And then um, the last part that I have, which I noticed because I was trying to see what the ending of the like, you know how they have the opening song and then the visual and the ending song and the visual. So I was wanted to see what the ending visual looks like. And there was an extra scene of Suzaki's sister and mom. The post credit scene, so it's like Suzaki is kind of jealous because Miyano got 36 chocolates. Yeah, I actually, I wrote that in Rocky Road because, Aww. like, I just empathized. Um, not, I, I should say I sympathize because I certainly can't relate to someone I like getting um, <laughs> 36 Valentine's Day chocolates. But, um, yeah, absolutely sympathize. There's nothing like um, just feeling that level of disappointment mm-hmm. regarding someone that you you like so much. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I, I compartmentalize the scene because I also had it in Rocky Road, but you get to see like when he gets back home, you get to see his sister, which she's so cute with her cute hair yeah. and glasses. And the mom doesn't have a face, but she sounded nice. So. <laughs> right. She was like farther away. They didn't really give her a lot of detail. Yeah, yeah. But I thought that his family was cute wait i have a question wait we're going into banana split so let me ask the question because it just i just thought i just thought so when we saw his mother and sister right Mm -hmm. post credit they had red hair are they all dyeing their hair see that is why there's a plot hole right (laughs) right because i'm thinking he's like yo like fruit basket that shit's (laughs) natural it comes out like that what are you talking about are they all dyeing their hair the same shade of orange? <laughs> I have heard of couples doing that, like doing couple dye. Oh, interesting. But family dye, like that's a lot. <laughs> that is kind of a lot. Yeah. Even him? Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. But that would be my only banana split that I just thought of right now. Do you have any banana split? Yeah, I do. Um, One of them is the Pocky. So when you look at the box, it says men's Pocky. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, so I was just like, Pocky is Pocky. Why would you put men? It's Pocky. Right. That reminds me of buying like the foam earplugs and like the pink ones say like, for women. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, we just don't all want to lose our hearing. It's not exclusive to, like, women or men. <laughs> right, exactly. So I'm just kind of like, y'all are just eating chocolate. Like, I'm not going to buy female Pocky. I'm buying Pocky. Yeah. Miyano gives away Kurosawa's chocolates, but he keeps Suzaki's Pocky. Oh, that's right. Right. And then he's kind of like, he's like, no, it doesn't mean special treatment. But then he's like... Does it mean special treatment? <laughs> right. That's why I have it in split because I would have been it would have been float floats your boat. But like, mm, stop denying it, Miano. Oh, it'll take him a minute. It's a really big step. Come to the bright side, son. <laughs> yeah, step into the rainbow. For real. Oh, feel the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes oh my god drive on rainbow road with us for real i was split on people asking if they were dating yeah that's a lot that's a lot for two people who never claimed to be queer don't don't pry like that yeah don't do that that's not not everybody is like open like that and they're figuring things out and on top of it y'all go to an all boys school yeah so my mind wouldn't go there it wouldn't go there until there were like clearly obvious signs yeah him just saying hi to him is not a sign to me yeah the fact that they like share manga it's like a cool you know yeah i'm glad you guys have a shared interest you know it's that's like neat that you club. guys do that yeah yeah oh and then i just put meetings okay so this is this is crazy because this is also going to lead into the only ice cream you scream that i got because i don't have hot fudge and so the rocky road was the same as yours with Sazaki feeling insecure okay. about the chocolate yeah and i i don't have any other points so <laughs> take it away okay so First part of our explainer is Fudanchi, which I said earlier is just a boy that likes boy love stories, while Fujoshi is 
a girl that likes boys love stories. Now, things start to get a little bit more hectic when they talk about uke and semi. So uke could mean submissive, but it also could mean bottom. And then semi is dominant, but it could also mean top. So the next part that I have, which kind of gets into the only ice cream ice cream I have, is that Miyano tells Sasaki that Hirano is an uke with a roommate that plays basketball, which is basically like you're telling Sasaki that his classmate is a bottom. Right. You know what? This reminds me of something that I had the thought but did not write down, which could be in like this ice cream, ice cream category. Mm. It really feels like Miano is like writing this fan fiction about his friend. And that's not something you do with real people. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah, you don't ship real people. It's for fiction. Yeah, but even so, like, if Hirano is submissive or is a bottom, why would you tell Sasaki that without his permission? Yeah, that's uncalled for. That's why I started looking up the meanings and I was just like, what does it mean? Because either he's saying that he's submissive, which is also none of Sasaki's business, or he's saying how he likes to have sex, which is definitely none of Sasaki's business. Yeah. But... That is all I have, actually. All right. Well, let us move into episode three. Senpai is dot dot dot. Here is our soft surf summary brought to us by Wikipedia. Miyano begins to wonder whether Sasaki's intentions toward him are truly platonic. He overhears an upperclassman confronting Sasaki over his interest in yaoi manga, which Sasaki does not show any embarrassment over. On White Day, Miyano gifts Sasaki some candy, causing Sasaki to become flustered and run off after accepting the gift. The school year comes to a close, and Miyano meets Ogasawara, the student who questions Sasaki about Yaoi because of his girlfriend's obsession over it. Later that day, Sasaki and Miyano ride the train home together. Miyano falls asleep and accidentally rests his head on Sasaki's shoulder. Sasaki, Thinking Miyano is asleep, whispers, I like you. This startles Miyano awake. Sasaki quickly exits the train as it stops, leaving Miyano to wonder why he would say such a thing. And that is our soft serve summary. Oh my god. Chica, do you have a theme for this episode? A confession three episodes in. (laughs) Three episode in confession. I'm living for this show. Yeah. But my theme is love is sweet, love is kind, love is quiet. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Again, I didn't like put a theme into words, but this episode was kind of giving like pride in your identity. Mm. And I know we're not in pride month yet, but it really was giving that because Sasaki was like adamant in his enjoyment of boys' love and showing no shame or embarrassment over it whatsoever. And I think there's, like, a conversation later where they're all, like, kind of talking about it. So, like, that's kind of, like, the beginnings of of a theme I had. No, it makes sense to me, actually. Thank you. Do you have any sprinkles? Mm Mm-mm. Me neither. This show, um, for the record, I feel like I've had minimal notes. I I was just, like, so experiencing it. I was just, like, drenched in this show. And it was hard to, like get out of that, like, glued to my screen, like, mindset and and make some notes for some things. Yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, for me, it's weird because it's like, I'm rarely angry. Right. Which is nice. It's (laughs) so nice. Coming off of the last show we did, where I feel like the majority of my notes were on the the bottom half of our Sunday ingredients, Mm -hmm. it is nice to be heavy floats your boat and not much else right now. Yeah. But with that said, let's get into Flutes Your Boat. Do you want to kick it off, Chica? I said sharing Coco as Sazaki waits for Hirano is so cute. That is precious. Guys, I love a cozy drink. In particular, I love hot cocoa. So to share everything hot cocoa means to me, like with someone else, 
that is so cozy and I want that. <laughs> right. And my thing is, I mean, I know it'll be a slight culture shock, but I would love to have hot cocoa in a can. Me too. What is that experience like? Yeah. Like, yes, like, do you, can you pick out the ones that's like, there is marshmallows in this or there was, there used to be, there like, used you know, to be. <laughs> <laughs> Like, but I just thought it was so adorable. And then they actually had it. And it's like a mini, you know, that people have mini dates like that. Like, let's go out for a coffee. Let's go out for an ice cream. Like, it's supposed to be quick. Yeah. So I like that. Yeah, I really did too. And while they were sharing that cocoa, my first floats your boat is really kind of felt like I can't even really say a Freudian slip because maybe maybe Miano was really just that clueless when he was talking about people being cat-tongued and which I think Miano said meant like you can't handle hot liquids or something like you need them to cool down a lot before you can drink or something. Mm. He's like I wondered if that like makes them like clumsy kissers which like (laughs) I'm glad he addressed that internally later a little bit. Yes. But it was just such a funny conversation i think he was saying it before he realized what he was saying yeah but that whole moment was really great (laughs) that was my next one too i was just like miano is relating everything back to bl but does he not think about what he's saying now Suzaki will have to show he isn't a clumsy kisser. Right. I knew it wasn't going to happen, yeah. but I'm so glad he's like, want to find out. I was like, ooh. ooh yes, Suzaki. Ass. Fire. <laughs> like, uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you have next? The next thing that I have is just Suzaki, like, thinking to himself, like, how he's just dying to touch Miano. Mm, mm-hmm. The yearning. The it's yearning. giving everything to me. Yeah. Yes. Um, the next thing I have is a little bit more serious, and that would be when Sasaki defends boys' love to Ogasawara by saying, yeah. you know, the story, no, it couldn't have just been a guy and a girl. It wouldn't be the same. What made it good was that it was boys' love, and I love that he put it that way. Queer stories are so important. Yes. Yes. Like... It doesn't matter who's doing the doing as long as it makes sense in the story. And I loved how he was just so nonchalant about it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something that even Miyano could learn from Suzaki because Suzaki's just so comfortable within himself. Yeah. Well, not so, so, because it's not like he wasn't grappling with liking Miano, but once he's set on something, like, you can't really shame him about it. Yeah. So, yeah, so I hope Miano starts to pick up on that. Me too. Yeah. I have Miano's full face blush after hearing Suzaki defend BL, and he's just like, Suzaki is so cool. Yeah. And I'm just like, yes. Right. Progress. <laughs> Progress. And he was just so nervous. Like hearing him defend boys love like that and him talk about it like so confidently. I think he just didn't know what to do. He was just so flustered. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know. The next thing that I have is Miyano gifting Sasaki candy for white day yes oh my gosh because sasaki was so like you guys he was so happy yeah i mean like fully smitten over the gift because miyana was like no i didn't give anything to anybody else so sasaki after all of the sadness and like disappointment and jealousy he felt on valentine's day he got like the flip side of that, all the joy, yeah. all the joy of being the only one. Oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> it's so good. Like, oh, so I'm good. so happy for him. Me like, too. Oh, it's like my baby, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The last thing I have is the confession. I technically have two more things before the confession. Okay. The first thing I have is when Sasaki and Miyano go to the bookstore yeah. and Sasaki tells him, I was just thinking that this is kind of nice when Miyano kind of asked him what was up. And he's like, I was just thinking this is kind of nice. That is so sweet. That is so wonderful. I just love that so much. The little things mean so much when you're with somebody you think is so special. Yeah. All of those things count. And he was just already in his feels. It was beautiful. Yeah. And I have one more thing before the confession. And it was just the fact that 
We had a falling asleep on the shoulder trope. Yes. Love that. Love that so much. Yes. It was so cute. And y'all, see, because at first, at first I started writing Banana Split because I was just like, what is he whispering? Right, right. Same. I was just like, what is he whispering? But then Miano's ass like shoots up and he's like, well, I'm, uh, whatever, right? But he plays it off like I just woke up or whatever. He confessed. That's why I said love is quiet. Because he was just like, he couldn't help himself, you guys. Like, he just had to say that he likes him. Oh, God. I literally got chills. That does not happen to me often watching something. Yeah. This is peak romance, guys. This is it for me. Like, I... I'm living. I got chills from that confession. It was so sweet, so pure. Oh, he like, because he wants to say it, but he doesn't know if he can. So he took the opportunity when he thought that he could get it off of his chest, but it still wouldn't change anything. But he heard him. And it's a cliffhanger because we're not going to watch this episode for, you know, the next episode for like a week or so. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, we're, we're, all, we're left on this cliff hanging. Yeah, it, it was just so beautiful. Like, it was. This is making up for, I don't know if the next series, which y'all will find out in July, I don't know if the next, I know that there is romance and stuff. I just don't know how the physicality is because i haven't watched it yeah me neither when it comes to like this show if we think about our entire slate of what we're doing this year this is the most physically affectionate show that i think we're covering and i am just on cloud nine about it me too me too it makes up for like seeing basically like oh here's a hug in my happy marriage (laughs) right yeah and like, oh, well, actually, no, I don't want to spoil anything if people are just tuning into this and haven't seen Oku. But yeah, you know. Oh, let's not. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I was just so ecstatic. Like, this is this is the best. Me too. Um, do we want to move into Banana Split? I don't have any. Yeah. Okay. So one of the things I have is Sasaki is not doing well in school. Does the teacher reveal that to the student council or does the teacher advise the student to be tutored by someone in the student council? Because I think that it's unfair for Hirano and Sasaki. That's a very fair question. My guess is the latter sounds more plausible yeah yeah and legal yeah 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 because i was just kind of like "Mm." which i mean if i was in a school committee see it could never be me yeah i ran track and was a cheerleader for a reason oh i was up and down like theater writing all that shit yeah yeah me being responsible for somebody else's grades or getting them up no. no, no, never. <laughs> you got to ask God first. Uh, it's not going to be me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Miano's struggle with reading BL or people knowing that he reads BL is also his struggle with his own sexuality. Oh, I think that those definitely go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like when he's open about like, yeah, I like BL. Yeah, I'm a Fudanchi. Then he might be like... I see Sasaki for real, like... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then the last one, but I already told y'all, was just me being like, what did Sasaki whisper? But we found out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any Rocky Road? I have one. Okay, what is it? I said that I feel bad that Sasaki has to repress his feelings. That does suck. It's a very delicate situation. Yeah. Because he, he's he's already there. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like, I know he's feeling this sense of overabundance, but then at the same time, like stress, because he doesn't want to do anything that Miano is going to dislike. Yeah. Oh my God, what a roller coaster. I'm just like thinking about it right now, because on the one hand, he's probably so happy from any interaction, any little bit probably feels like so much. Mm -hmm. And yet he can't fully act on the true like depth of his feelings. He feels like he can't even touch him because that would be too much. Yeah. 
that is a lot to deal with on a day-to-day basis. It's no wonder he's not doing well in school. Right. Like, I I would lose focus, too, because, like, how do you come to terms with it? And then they're friends and they share this thing with each other yeah. that he doesn't see him sharing with other people at school. So he doesn't want to lose that and he doesn't want to lose him. But he feels so much like I've just. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any nuts or hot fudge? I have ice cream, you scream. Okay, I have one ice cream, you scream. And I'm sorry I didn't, like, flesh it out no, it's okay. a whole lot. But I don't I don't think I really had to. It was just the scene with Ogasawara harassing Sasaki over his enjoyment of boys' love. It came off kind of homophobic. Right, like, at first. And, like, that's why, like, when Miyano was looking at him, his hair started drooping. Um, in that scene where they were all like in front of each other, because he was just Ogasawara sees um, Miyano, realizes it's Miyano. He's just like, you're a Fudanshi. And then his hair does like this down thing. Mm-hmm. And then when he realizes that Ogasawara has these intense feelings because his girlfriend is a Fujoshi, then his hit the hair goes back up because like I could see why he was feeling down because it was just like, oh my gosh, is this a homophobic experience? And are we going to be shamed? Yeah. And that's something that had been kind of going through Miyano's mind these past few episodes, actually is just will Sasaki be shamed for reading this and so to see him defend the genre and then to do it again like in front of his face and stuff I was just like okay like that's awesome but Ogaswara is just like okay your your girlfriend likes is a Fujoshi how does that bother you yeah she's still your girlfriend so she's probably bisexual you're welcome Yeah, congratulations. You're with a queer girl. Right? For real. Like, uh, switch your tone up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But that's all I have. The ice cream, you scream, I have, I have to... Okay, people move at their own pace, but I do feel bad that Miyano seems adverse to physically going to another level with Sasaki. And when I say another level, it's not even just like I'm not going from A to Z. Like, that's not what I mean. It's just there were times when Suzaki even wanted to just hold his shoulder and he just hesitated. I think he's just so afraid of accepting his own sexuality. And that's just going to have to come in his own time. Yeah, It is a shame to watch Suzaki yearning so badly when it's clear that they both feel similarly but i think it's just gonna take a minute for miyano to embrace his sexuality yeah yeah and i think that that was also the last ice cream ice cream i have is just miyano is sensitive to people criticizing him slash bl but i like i noted earlier in banana splits i think it's just connected to his sexuality and who knows when he's gonna feel comfortable enough to like accept that and be at least open about it. Not to say that it's not scary, but it's like moving past the point of like, I should keep this to myself to just being out. But yeah. I hope that Sasaki's confession stirs that within him. Mm -hmm. Because if he does have these blossoming feelings, hearing that is going to do a number on him, I think. I don't think he's going to be able to stop thinking about that moment. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited to see where this goes and what happens next. I have thoroughly enjoyed these three episodes so far. Inject them into my veins. Yes. <laughs> we love this. Yeah. All right. But with that, thank you all so much for tuning into this episode of Show Show Sunday. Before we get into our outro spiel, we just want to give a huge thank you to all of our wonderful patrons. If you would like to check out what we're doing on Patreon, head on over to patreon.com slash show show Sunday, where we've got our licorice live action. We're currently reviewing Hanayuri Dango, Boys Over Flowers, a Japanese live action, and that is a wild ride to say the very, very least. And our Shonen Sunday podcast is currently wrapping up, I believe, this month our coverage of Hori Mia, and we're moving on to something incredible up next. So we've heard, neither of us have seen it, but it looks incredible. But yeah, with that said, let's give a huge thank you to our patrons, starting with our Sprinkles patrons. We've got Pete, PJ, Miles, and Akemi. 
for our wonderful whipped cream patrons, we have Mary and Mark M. And for our hot fudge patrons, we have Mark D, Mackenzie, AJ, and Aaron. Thank you all so, so much for being our patrons. Thank you. Also, you guys, our anniversary is coming soon. Mm -hmm. And so we have created a SpeakPipe account where you guys can leave us a one minute voicemail letting us know how much you love shoujo sunday and what it means to you the link is going to be in our show notes and we will see if we can add as many as possible into our anniversary episode in july yeah absolutely and if you would like to keep up with us during the week, you can follow us at Shoujo Sunday across all socials, and that includes Blue Sky and Threads, so follow us on there. If you would like to keep up with us individually, my name is Gianna Luna, and that is at Gianna underscore Luna underscore across socials, except for Blue Sky, it's just Gianna Luna one and in Gianna, and you can check out my song Twilight Champagne across all music platforms. How about you, Chica? Yeah, you guys can find me at Chica Supreme, and that's Chica with a K and not two C's. Also, um, if you go to our website, which is new and improved, I don't know if this is the first time we said that <laughs> recording. It might be. It probably is. Yeah, we we revamped our website. It looks so nice. If I do say so myself, I know I worked on it, but I'll say so. It looks very nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, go and check it out. You should enjoy it, but we have a guest spots page. And so I have been on a number of podcasts this year. Um, so if you like to, I guess, hear me in other environments, you can go check that out. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, we will see you in a couple weeks for more coverage of Sasaki and Miano. We will see you then. Bye. Bye.